Hi all, welcome back to C++ tutorial on Qt Fulcrum. This session is on namespace in C++. Namespace acts as a region that provides scope to the identifiers used in the program such as functions and variables. We will be focusing on two points here. One is the creating or defining of your namespace and the second is accessing the namespace. So there are multiple methods for accessing your namespace. In this session, we'll be discussing about two methods. The first method is making use of the scope resolution operator and the second method is using directive. So why we need namespace? We are mainly used to avoid name collisions. That is, consider a situation when we have two students with the same name in the same class. Whenever we need to differentiate them, we would have to use some additional information along with their name, like their father's name or mother's name, etc. The same situation can arise in your C++ applications. Consider the scenario. This is my main. Within my main, I have variable a that is defined as integer and the same is defined as float. This is not permitted by our language. When I'm trying to print this a or whenever I'm trying to access a, my compiler doesn't know to which a I'm referring. Either it is an integer variable a or is it to the float variable a that you're referring to. This creates ambiguity. Let's run and see what is going to happen. Your program doesn't build, it fails. You can see the error message here. Line number 7, conflicting declaration float A. Line number 6, previous declaration as int A. So here arise the name conflict. And more of these conflicts comes when you handle multiple files. Multi-file handling will be discussed in later sessions. So to avoid this name conflicts or such types of errors, we make use of namespaces. So let's see how to create your namespace to tackle this error. So let me show you how to create the namespace. Use the keyword namespace. Specify your namespace name. Let me name it as first. Within brackets, you can specify the elements of your namespace. So here, let me include the integer variable a inside the first namespace. So I have created a namespace by name first and I have included an integer as an element of my namespace. Let me create one more namespace to include our float variable. So, use the keyword namespace. Specify the namespace name. Let me name it as second. Include the elements of the namespace. So, I am including the float here. So, I have created two namespaces. First and second. My first namespace include the integer a and the second namespace include the float a. Now I want to access the elements of the namespace. So as discussed there are two methods for accessing the namespace. We will see the first method that is making use of the scope resolution operator. So if you want to access the first namespace Specify your namespace name. Then specify the scope resolution operator. This double colon is referred to as the scope resolution operator. Specify the element that you want to access from the namespace. Say I want to access the variable A. Let me put this inside a cout statement so that I can print and verify whether it is accessing or not. So this Cout statement is going to give me the output as 10 because 
I'm going to access A, which is included inside my first namespace. So, this A is initialized with a value 10, so it should give me the output as 10. Let's verify. Yes. It's giving an output 10, so I can confirm that it is accessing the namespace first, whose element was the integer data A, which is possessing a data of 10. So let's go ahead and access our second namespace too. So specify the namespace name, that is second. Scope resolution operator, specify the element that you want to access from the namespace. I am accessing A, which is float from the second namespace. So this cout statement is going to print 23.4. So here I am accessing my both namespace first as well as second through the scope resolution operator. Let's verify. Okay. I have not used an endl statement, so my both output is shown in a single line. Let's go back and give endl so that it is better printed. Yes. yes, so the first output that is 10 is nothing but the integer entity that is accessed from the first namespace. 23.4 is accessed from your second namespace. So that's about the first method. Now let's see the second method of accessing the namespace. So use the directive using use the keyword namespace then specify your namespace name that you want to access. For example, let's take first. So this statement indicates that you are accessing the first namespace. So after specifying this statement, if you try to access A, this will give you the output as 10 because it is accessing the element A which is inside your first namespace. Let's check. Yes, it's giving you an output 10, which means that you are accessing the first namespace. So though you access the namespaces in both the methods, the difference is the scope resolution method accesses only the desired elements of namespace. But the second method, that is using directive, uses your entire namespace in one shot. Now, you should be able to explain the meaning of this statement. So, it's pretty clear that you are trying to access a namespace and the name of the namespace is std. So, you are trying to access a namespace by name std. So, std is a standard namespace. The standard library files are specified here. So, you need to include the same for the successful execution of your program. So, this is about namespaces, creating your namespace or defining your namespace and accessing the namespace in two ways. The first one we discussed is using the scope resolution operator and the second one making use of the using director. Thank you for watching our videos. Please do like, share and new viewers, please do subscribe and don't forget to tap the bell icon. You'll be notified whenever we upload new videos. Thank you.